All right, so today we're talking about the seven reasons that people give for not wanting to go to counseling. So here I am in Myrtle Beach at an amazing resort, uh, taking the time to really do a deep dive working with couples. I'm on several training calls, several sessions. And you know, as I'm thinking about it, I'm realizing that there are a number of people who are ready to go because they're ready to take their relationship to the next level. However, there are those couples who remain stuck simply because you have one spouse who wants to move forward and the other one who struggles with the whole life idea of counseling. Now, generally speaking, generally, not in all cases, usually men are more apprehensive to the counseling process than women. However, there are those cases where women are very hesitant as well. And generally, there are seven reasons that typically come up, uh, which I would call excuses. But let's go through them. Number one, uh, we can solve the problem on our own. You know, I think it's quite interesting. It was Albert Einstein who had a phenomenal quote. He said that no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. And so if you are the individual who is responsible for creating the problem, the solution can't come from you because you have the same mindset, the same belief pattern, the same processes that will create more of the same reality. And so sometimes it takes someone outside of yourself to guide you through a process. But so many people become what I call DIYers. They wanna do it on their own. They wanna fix it themselves. But the reality is you don't have the skills, the knowledge, the know-how to do it, number one. Number two, it's challenging to counsel your own relationship because your partner is not receptive to you. They're not willing to hear from you. And so sometimes you need somebody outside yourself. If you think about it like this, if you've ever been on a plane before, when a plane lifts off of the ground, 90% of its journey is off course. That the only way that it gets from where it's leaving to its final destination is that there's a radar system in the cockpit that's guiding that plane. So there are constant course corrections being made all throughout the course of the trip. The latitude, longitude lines, the, you know, the systems are always shifting. And so there's a, a radar system, a navigation system that's guiding them. Without that, that plane would wind up in Timbuktu somewhere. Likewise, couples who attempt to restore their relationship on their own, 90% of their journey is off course. And guess what? They can have the best of intentions, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I kind of think of it like this. If you've ever been watching television, the Food Network, and you see these master chefs create these amazing dishes, and you, you look and say, wow, I can do that. So you get the ingredients list, you go to the supermarket, you grab everything that you need. Now you have it all spread out on the kitchen table. Will your meal wind up tasting like the masterpiece displayed on the Food Network? Probably not, because having all the ingredients alone isn't enough to design or to create a masterpiece. Sometimes it takes know-how and knowledge from someone who's done it before. Likewise, reading all the books, watching all the videos, listening to all of the podcasts is not enough. You have a lot of great information, but how you take all of that information, put it into a process to guide and navigate you from pain island to pleasure island, it takes someone who's been on that journey a number of times to get you there. And so doing it on your own is not the best solution. The second reason or excuse that people give is that um, we tried it before, but it didn't work. Now, interestingly enough, 95% of my clients have come from previous counselors and therapists. Now, many of them were really good. And so there's two reasons why it didn't work. Number one, it didn't work because you didn't work it because somehow, sometimes, somehow we think that the going to the session is the work. No, going to the session is where you get the instructions to find out what work to do in between the sessions. And for whatever reason, uh, they didn't like the therapist, they didn't like the direction, they didn't like what they were unpacking, and so therefore it did not work because they did not work it. The second reason is maybe they went to someone who did not have 
the proper education or the knowledge or the specialty in this particular area. Now, the majority of people who come here are here because they've experienced an affair and they're trying to figure out how to restore that relationship. And many therapists and counselors are great, uh, but if you think about it like a physician, imagine having a family doctor right? You're going to your general practitioner. And if you go with a tremendous back pain, it is his or her responsibility to refer you to a specialist, someone who specializes in backs, like a chiropractor, because they have a specialized knowledge that a general practitioner does not have. And so therefore, you can get your solution from a different type of doctor. Likewise, as infidelity recovery specialists, we specialize in what? Couples who are in crisis, those on the verge of divorce, those who have been impacted by an affair and are trying to figure out how to restore their relationship. And so therefore, every counselor or every therapist doesn't have that level of expertise. And so though it didn't work for your previous counselor, is not an indication that it won't work here. You have to find people who have what you want and have knowledge and experience and giftings in areas that speak to your situation, all right? So, number three, the third reason or excuse that people give for not going to counseling is, you know what, we simply don't have the time. Listen, I'm working so many shifts, I got two jobs, uh, our schedules can never sync. You know, many of our couples are extremely busy, whether they have high demanding careers, whether they work multiple jobs, whether they're bi-coastal and constantly on the road. And so we help to accommodate that by creating an availability uh, that suits their needs. For instance, uh, halfway through the week, we have sessions as late as midnight to accommodate couples who are in time zones that we are not. We're on the East Coast, but we have couples who are on the West Coast or Mountain and Central Time or couples in different countries. Like for instance, when I'm talking to my Australian clients, they're several hours apart or in the Middle East or in Asia or in Central South America. There are different time slots. So we accommodate all of them to rob people of an excuse of why they can't move forward. The second thing is if the weekly process doesn't work ongoing because schedules fluctuate and I'm not sure what's going to happen from week to week to week, this is exactly why we provide our three day private marriage intensive because it allows you to steal away time for a weekend or during the midweek, <clears throat> uninterrupted, undivided time for three days to go deep dive. And guess what? We're together for 10, 12 hours a day, times three days. What we do in those days literally are equivalent to eight months of counseling. That it would take you eight months of weekly sessions to do what we do in those three days. And so that is why it's so impactful. And people who have incredible schedules prefer this process because they can get through it much quicker, but we're able to go deeper dive and do in those three days what cannot be done in eight months of traditional therapy or counseling. All right. Okay, so here we are, number four. I don't wanna to talk to a stranger. I'd rather talk to a friend. Now, this is interesting. Uh, people rather go to people that they trust, and I get it. I respect that it makes sense. We should have an inner core. We should have people that we rely upon and can go to for guidance and direction. The challenge is this, though. We have a tendency of sharing our problems with people who share our problems. So rather going to people who represent our solution or who have our answer, we're going to people who are in the same situation, dealing with the same thing. Interestingly enough, the majority of couples who come to us reveal to us that they are the couple for so many other couples. They're the it couple. They're the ones who everyone is inspired by, yet they're in crisis on the verge of divorce and their marriage and family are falling apart. What does that say? perception isn't actually one's reality. So from the outside, it appears that this couple has it all together. It appears that they have the answer. It appears that they're doing things right. And so when you go to other couples to get wisdom and guidance, the question is, uh, do they have a track record of success? Are they, going, are they going to tell you what you need? Sometimes your friends love you so much, they're so emotionally connected to you, they're gonna say what feels good and what sounds good, and you don't need a cheerleader. 
You don't need a hype man. You need somebody who's going to give you uh, knowledge and understanding in a comprehensive way and can filter through all of the mess and speak to you in such a way that gets you to experience personal transformation in your relationship. So someone who is expertized in a particular area would be the best person for you. So a stranger could actually be your best friend. Think about if you had a medical condition. Would you say, I don't want to go to some stranger doctor. I'd rather go to a friend to diagnose me. Well, that wouldn't make sense. Your friend doesn't have the qualifications and the expertise to help you with your physical ailment or physical problem. Likewise, your friend may not have the expertise to help you with your marital or relational problem. So find an expert, find a professional, find a specialist who can guide you through a process. The fifth reason or excuse that people give for not wanting to go to counseling is they simply don't know anyone in their area. They don't know where to start. And so we solve that problem because we provide virtual counseling. See, it's not about physical proximity. There was a time where you would have to look in a phone book and find out who is in close proximity of your home so that you can get to them. But because of the power of technology, uh, we were able to solve that problem. And so now we have clients all over the world. And now geographical distance no longer has to keep you from getting the expertise that you need. If you had 20 counselors around the corner from you, but they didn't have the area of expertise that you're looking for, technology helps to solve that problem. And so no longer is that an excuse. You can find someone who has exactly what you need. Reason number six, you know, we'll just go to our pastor. Now, there's a challenge with this because I do believe that everyone should have spiritual leadership in their lives that guides them, that, that puts them on the path of personal growth and development and helps them to connect to their God. But that does not mean that that spiritual leader uh, is well equipped to guide you through a marital issue that you're experiencing in your relationship. Now, it is their responsibility to provide you with biblical truths and principles and scriptures that can speak into your situation, but they may not know how to guide you through a process. Now, when it comes to pastoral counseling, generally speaking, you're dealing with a system or an approach that believes in one up to three sessions. And in that process, the goal is to help that couple experience breakthrough, an aha moment. They're given instructions to then carry out and implement versus professional counseling that believes that, listen, you've been in this issue for several years. So two or three sessions isn't enough because you can't even go deep enough. So you need somebody to go deep enough, number one, and then to guide you through a process to get to your final destination. And so you need not just principles, but you need proper application of the principles and insight and perspective that can speak to the issues that you're dealing with. So spiritual advice is great, but you also need to couple that with some practical things that will really help to restore your relationship. Now, I know many pastors who are colleagues of mine, and they will even tell you that they would love to have a professional counselor that they can refer many of their parishioners to, because the reality is they are dealing with issues in their own marriage that they're trying to figure out, and they seek professional help. So if they seek professional help, how much more important is it for their parishioner to seek professional help as well? So while I would encourage you to go to your pastor or your minister, I do not believe that it is enough to get you through what you're going through. You need somebody who can guide you through the process based upon their knowledge and their experience. All right, the number seven reason that people give or excuse for not wanting to go to counseling is this. You ready? It's too expensive. We simply can't afford it. Now, the reality is there's always going to be a percentage of people who simply can't afford it. They do not have exposable income to really afford anything beyond their basic necessities of life. And so for those couples who kind of fall into that category, we're tremendously sensitive to your situation. And that's why we have free resources, whether they be the hundreds of videos that we have on uh, YouTube, or whether it be the free blogs and articles that we offer on our website. Um, all of that is available to you. We even have a book that you can purchase for a nominal cost, The Audacity of Marriage, 10 Principles to Lifelong Partnership. And if you truly immerse yourself in those materials, it will take you several steps beyond where you currently are. But for the overwhelming majority of people, 
it's really not a financial issue. It's an emotional issue. So either there's fear, there's trepidation, there's anxiety, or there's a lack of belief that they have in this process because certain questions have not been answered or certain assumptions have been made. And so they haven't placed a value in counseling. The reality is many people who have gone through counseling have experienced a tremendous transformation in one's life, but it's about where you place your value. And we've noticed that a lot of people, when they're making decisions about where they're spending their money, uh, they spend their money on what they value. So if you value going to a sports game, you'll spend a few hundred dollars getting tickets to a good seat at a professional game because that's what you value. If you value uh, toys and trinkets and technology and vacations and clothes, then that's where you will spend your money. If you value <clears throat> celebrating holidays uh, or going on vacations, that's where you will spend your money. And so where you place your value is where you place your money. So really it's a value issue. And so the reality is people who have come to us who didn't have immediate access to the money did what was necessary because they believed in what this process could do for them. And so we've had people who have said, you know what, the holidays are coming up, whether it's Christmas or whether it's a birthday or whether it's Valentine's Day, why do what we've always done and spend thousands of dollars on an experience that lasts for a moment, but yet our relationship is wrecked. Why prepare for a holiday when there's emotional disconnection, there's strife, there's animosity between us, what good would that holiday be? And so they use the intensive as their gift to themselves for the holiday. I know people who have, uh, were just a day or so away from trips and, and cruises who said, you know what, if we go on this vacation, what are we really gonna be doing? We're gonna be disconnected, we're not gonna be talking, uh, we're going to be two individuals in the same place at the same time with no emotional connection, not truly enjoying this experience. Why don't we take that money and invest it in counseling or in this intensive? I've had people that have said, you know what? I'm going to sell off investments. I'm going to tap into a 401k. I'm going to borrow the money. I'm going to get a credit card. I'm going to do what's necessary because I believe that if I take this money and invest it in my marriage, I'm going to re receive a return on my investment. See, wherever you put your focus and wherever you put your attention and whatever, wherever you put your money, the goal is to receive a return on that investment. Likewise, you are the greatest asset that you have. The greatest. Your marriage is an asset. And when you sow into it, you will reap from it. And so this process is an opportunity to experience and have something that you've never had before or to have what you once have had, but haven't had it in a long time. And so people spend thousands of dollars on a wedding day, but very little money on their marriage. People will spend tens of thousands on a divorce as opposed to money on their marriage. And so if you put your money where your marriage is, the return would be incredible. And so that's what we've spent our career doing, helping people to receive a tremendous return on their investment in their marriage and in themselves. Listen, folks, these are the seven reasons that people give. If you're telling yourself a story that lines up with one of these reasons, listen, Get the reason or get the excuse out of the way. Get beyond your fear wall because on the other side of your fear is your freedom. Imagine the life that you want. Imagine the relationship that you want. We believe that you can live your marriage by design and not default. We believe that your best days are ahead of you instead of behind you. And regardless of where you are today, regardless of what you've been through, there's hope and healing on the other side. We've taken hundreds and hundreds of couples through a process that has led to their restoration. And guess what? The same thing that's possible for them is possible for you. So listen, go to the website couplesacademy.org, sign up for a free discovery call. Let's talk about some options and a plan of how your relationship can be restored. See you on the other side.